let us help you reach your peak in retirement. It's time for Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee. Hey, everybody. Welcome into the podcast. This is Retirement Elevated. Mark here back with Sean uh, to talk investing, finance, and retirement. I've been off the show a couple of weeks. Sean's had some guests on. So what's going on, my friend? How are you? Hey, living the spring dream in Utah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> is that like every place else at Pollen Central and crazy temperatures? Oh, uh, man. it's The allergy season is pretty bad right now, but... Yeah, the the seventy degrees one day, forty degrees the next with snow is. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm done. I saw uh, th- th- this recent cold turn. It just happened again. Somebody had posted. They said, "If it gets cold one more time, I'm putting my Christmas decorations back up." Oh <laughs> uh, man, I was. We were in St. George for a tournament a couple weeks ago, and it snowed on us. Oh geez, and, yeah. It, and so it's just just that time of year. It shouldn't it should never snow in St. George? It snowed there like twice in the last three years, and I've been there both times. Wow. Well, Mother Nature is, uh, you know, she's off her meds. She's angry with us, whatever, right? But it's uh, been an interesting uh, spring thus far already. But hey, listen, uh, I saw this article. I wanted to jump into it this week because uh, you and I, like I said, I haven't talked in a couple of weeks. You've had some of the guests on, which has been really good content. Uh, but, uh, you know, we talked earlier, uh, well, actually a number of times last year, Sean, about the SECURE Act. And some of the things and some of the changes they put through, obviously, it kind of got pushed down with all the COVID stuff going on. But the RMD rule, this uh, this 10-year RMD rule, I just saw this article. It's not what you think and not really in a good way either. So more changes. Right. The, it was kind of the, the SECURE Act was the death of the stretch IRA. Right, and, right. And it used to be that you could inherit a non-spousal inheritor. So, you know, a, a child or you know, a niece or nephew or something could inherit an IRA and they could stretch out withdrawals from the IRA over their life expectancy and just take required minimum distributions. And uh, when the SECURE Act was passed, January of 2020, that stretch went away and they said it was a 10-year rule. Mm -hmm. And and with that 10-year rule, the expectation or the thought by a lot of people, and this article is by Ed Slot, one of the most you know, renowned planners when it comes to tax law and tax planning in the country. And, and it was, it, the thought was, all right, well, we can just defer out growth until the 10 year period. And then you can pull the money out, which actually isn't the case at this point. So what have they done? So I guess this is the IRS publication 15, uh, 590-B, if you're interested. And uh, it looks like on pages 11 and 12, they made some changes here where it obviously is not that what we thought it was going to be. So what is the new, I guess, what are they doing? So instead of being able to defer out for the 10-year period Mm -hmm. and then take the the withdrawals out, what you have to do now uh, are years one through nine, you are going to be required to take out a required minimum distribution based on your life expectancy. And so they're not going to allow you to defer it out. You just have to you have to pull money out each and every year, um, based on you know their their required minimum distribution tables. And then at year ten, you have to pull all of it out. Oh well, that could make for a challenging tax situation. It, you've really got to do some tax planning at this point. So if you're in the situation where you inherit an IRA, mm-hmm. it, you've got to spend more time working with an advisor to do some strategic withdrawals over at that 10 year period to alleviate, you know, taxation down the road. You to, you know, we don't know where tax law is going to be after 2025. So there, you, you got to take that into account. There are a lot of things now that with this law changing that and the government changing the rules a little bit that you have to take into account when it comes to your planning. Yeah. So, I mean, so basically they, they, you've got to do the RMDs now, which wasn't the case. So I guess we were thinking when they first announced this, that, Instead of stretching it out over the lifetime, right? You had ten years to start, you know, pulling the money out, converting it, whatever it is that what you were doing, um, you know, in that time frame. So now they're saying possibly the RMDs of each of these one through nine years, and so it doesn't seem like that's a very viable option that really I would think anybody would want to use. And if that's the case for people who inherited one in twenty twenty, they're already subject then currently for twenty twenty one for an RMD. Is that correct? Am I reading that right? Right. Yeah, they've got a. They were subject for their RMD in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty. So they got to pull it this year. They've got. They've got to go ahead and pull it. And, and this is, you know, the way that I look at it. Depending on the size of the IRA, mm-hmm. you know, a required minimum distribution for a younger younger person isn't isn't a huge huge withdrawal, anyways. In a lot of cases, right. So it's more of a, a an administrative deal, and, and it becomes more of a nuisance than than anything. 
when it comes to doing these required minimum distributions for inherited IRAs now. So, but what if you have, okay, so just hypothetical here. So if somebody uh, leaves you a million dollar, you know, account, let's say, but you know, typically when we get an account from our parents or something like that, often we're close to, you know, we're in our prime or earning years on our own. For example, you know, your parents pass in their seventies or eighties, they leave you something. You're probably in your forties or fifties, you know, and you're making your own kind of, you know, you're probably at that tax level for yourself. I mean, now we're talking about taking these RMDs right away. Is that going to still be a danger zone, I guess, for kicking that tax bracket up? Yeah, depending on the size of the IRA. Um, right. If it, we're going to a bigger number like a million bucks, probably for sure then, right? You're looking at all of those distributions are taxed as ordinary income. And and you're right. You know, you're in your 40s and 50s. You're you're in higher earning years than you were in your, Ideally, yeah. in your 20s or 30s. You know, you hope. You know, maybe that does increase or kick you up into a higher bracket just for that, for that chunk of, of cash. Hmm. But I mean, if you're older, you know, in your social security age and you inherited some money, well, now you've got to take into account is your social security going to be taxed? Is, are those RMDs going to, that you're forced to pull out from inheriting an IRA? Are they going to kick you into a position to where your Medicare premiums are, are at a surplus? Mm. You, you know, so there, there's a lot of planning that needs to come from a tax perspective that needs to come with inheriting money just in general. Right, right. But now that you don't have the opportunity to defer out until year 10, it really becomes more of a, a consistent tax planning exercise. And, and you look at, right, yeah. you know, you inherit Roth IRAs, well, they're still requiring you to pull money out and you're losing 10 years of deferred growth on that Roth, mm-hmm. that inherited Roth, before you can pull it out. You're, you're being forced to pull some money out over years one through nine now, too. Yeah, so definitely, I mean, we're already looking at pushing this conversation, Sean, in general, in the financial field, the retirement planning field, that, hey, taxes, they are always been important, but they're really <laughs> seeming to continue to ramp up the urgency to be working with somebody and look at tax planning as a big portion of that because of all the spending that we're doing and so on and so forth. And there's all these little things now we're starting to hear about, little places, little tweaks that could really cause some serious... I, I read something the other day. I, I forget who it was. I think it was one of the guys at BlackRock maybe, but they were talking about this this log jam that's kind of building. And they said, you know, they feel like there's another couple of years of growth out there to happen. But when this dam breaks, this logs, <laughs> they kind of break the dam. We're looking at some major problems potentially around maybe around 2030, you know, 2025, somewhere in that neighborhood. And so tax planning seems to me to be continuing to be maybe the leading charge in a conversation to get people working with an advisor because there's a lot of stuff coming down the pike. Yeah. I mean, you can do one of two things. You can control how you plan or you can allow the government to control how your your plan is built. And, and what I mean by that is I have no control over what the government does exactly based with future tax law, I do have control over how I plan right now. And trying to utilize, I guess, the tools that are there while they're there. Because to our right. point here, <laughs> how much longer? I mean, they, this has changed a little bit. You know, will the tax code change in 2025 or sooner? Probably sooner with the amounts of money that we're spending. So you would think at some point, I mean, they're talking about the corporate tax rate. Uh, different states are talking about the estate tax planning. I mean, there's just a, they're looking at changing a lot of stuff. You got to pay for all the money you print somehow. (laughs) That's very true. That's very true. So any thoughts uh, as to, you know, if you're, if we're approaching this, how to handle that? Is there some things, some questions maybe we should ask an advisor when we go to sit down with one? It's not an easy exercise and talking to somebody for the first time isn't ever comfortable. Right. You know what I mean? So you, when you're, when you're looking at, at this situation in front of you, you know, spend some time and, and and sit down with a number of advisors or find a firm that like our, our firm specializes in retirement income planning and wealth management. You know, that's what that's what we do. And tax planning is a big a big focus. Ask the questions around it. Okay, so if I inherit this money, how is it gonna how, can I see a plan on how I'm gonna be taxed now and how I'm gonna be taxed in five years or ten years mm-hmm. based on how much I'm withdrawing? Yeah, you know, just like just like anything, you know, just like when you, there will be a mathematical point in time of when you should take your social security. There will be a mathematical point in time of, of how much money you should withdraw from your accounts to create the income that you need. There's also a mathematical amount that you should pull out from your accounts if you inherit money 
to alleviate and have your taxes be as low as possible or as streamlined as possible or flat as possible as time goes on. Gotcha. All right, folks. So we're going to uh, wrap it up this week. So definitely a big topic of conversation is the little changes. The IRS basically has defined the, the changes to the Secure Act's 10-year rule RMD, uh, basically on how that's going to work from a tax standpoint. So if you've got some questions, reach out and have a conversation uh, with Sean and the team. If you're thinking about leaving something behind, if you've been planning on doing something with an IRA or an account that you were thinking could be stretched and you didn't even realize that was gone, uh, let alone the changes to year one through 10 now, give the team a call at 855-50-RETIRE, 855-507-3847 before you take any action and check with a qualified professional like Sean and his teams at Elevated Retirement Group serving you here in the state of Utah. So 855-507-3847. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeart, Stitcher, all that good stuff. You can find it all at retirementelevatedpodcast.com. That's retirementelevatedpodcast.com. Sean, I'll talk to you later. Have a great week, my friend, and I'll catch up with you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate your time as always here on the show. This has been Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee, Managing Partner at Elevated Retirement Group. Investment advisory services offered through Elevated Capital Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.